Welcome back to Business Break. Today, we're here to give you some tips on how to manage all of the records your business may find itself accumulating. Uh, organizations today are flooded with all kinds of information and records, and it can be difficult to know what to keep, how long to keep it, and when to get rid of it. And today's presentation will provide an overview of some of the legislation that applies to record management for businesses and some basic tips for creating your own record management policy. There are gener generally two types of records that you might find as a business, those that are required to be kept by a law or a regulation and other business records that may be useful to the business but are not governed by any laws. To start off, we'll review some of the legislation that applies to record retention. Depending on the type of records that you have, there may be specific rules for what you need to keep and for how long you need to keep it. You won't be we won't be able to give an exhaustive overview in this segment, but we'll cover some of the more common types of records and the rules that apply. Legislation is also important for record retention because it provides time periods in which a party may bring a claim or an action against your organization. I provided a little more detail in a later section of this segment, but it's important from a record retention perspective because your organization may be required to produce relevant records and documents that pertain to that claim. Bethany is also going to provide some tips on what we should be covering in an internal record management policy. So one piece of legislation that, that may apply to your circumstances is the Limitations Act. It doesn't govern specific type of types of records, but it does set a general period of time that a party is able to start a civil claim or an action. And this is called the limitation period or the limitation date. The limitation date for civil claims is two years after the date that the party knew that the events giving knew about the events giving rise to the claim or 10 years after the claim arose. This is an important date for record retention because if a civil claim or an action is brought against your organization, you will be required to produce documents and records that are relevant to that claim. Therefore, as a general rule, the minimum amount of time that you should retain your records for is two years after the events in which the records relate to are completed. For example, you should be keeping records related to a contract for at least two years after the completion of the, the project or arrangement. Although the minimum period of time to re retain these records is two years, the best practice is to keep records for a period of six years. So you already always have the records that you need. Another piece of legislation that will affect how and for how long you retain your information is the Personal Information Protection Act. And it governs how private organizations in Alberta collect, use, disclose, and retain personal information. Personal information is defined in the act as information about an identifiable individual. And it includes an individual's name, address, phone number, their email address, uh, any photographs or videos of them. Um, or an individual's educational qualifications or salary. An organization must get consent from the individual to collect, use, or disclose of personal information unless there's a specific exemption within the Act. And the Act also limits an organization's ability to collect, use, and disclose of personal information only for purposes that are reasonable and only to the extent that uh, is reasonable for carrying out those purposes. So in terms of retention, the Act states that an organization may only retain personal information for as long as the organization reasonably requires the personal information for legal or business purposes. This means that your organization is going to need to make a judgment call with respect to how long those records can be retained. If records are related to an investigation under the Personal Information Protection Act, the Act requires that the organization retain the records for one year after the conclusion of the investigation. Further, prosecution of an offense under the Act may be com commenced within two years after the commission of the alleged offense, but not afterwards. This means again that that two year 
rule is coming into play. And you're going to want to make sure that you retain records for a period of time in order that you have them should there ever be a claim that arises. All businesses need to comply with the Business Corporations Act. Uh, if you are an incorporated entity in Alberta, you need to comply and maintain certain records under that act. The act specifically requires corporations to prepare and maintain certain records at its registered office. And the records that uh, a corporation is required to maintain include, uh, but in no means are, is this an exhaustive list, um, the articles and the bylaws of the corporation, uh, unanimous shareholders agreement, if there is one, uh, shareholder and director registers, meeting minutes and resolutions of the shareholders and directors, financial statements and reports and other financial information with respect to the business. And the Act also provides specific requirements for how these records are to be prepared, maintained and kept. The Business Corporations Act also deals with that two year limitation period um, with respect to actions that might be brought in relation to certain conduct of the corporation, the corporation shareholders or its directors under the Act. So for example, uh, an action may be brought against a dissolved body corporate within two years after its dissolution as if the body corporate had not been dissolved. This means that if you were to dissolve your corporation, you would need to maintain records for at least two years because somebody could still bring an action against your corporation for a period of two years from when the corporation was dissolved. The Business Corporations Act also provides several other timelines to consider for the retention of records. Corporations are required to keep information relating to their shareholders for at least seven years after the shareholder ceases to be a shareholder. And a corporation is not required to produce canceled security certificates after um, six years after the date of its cancellation, which means and implies that the corporation would need to produce a canceled security certificate within that six year period. Any person who's been granted the custody of the documents and records of a dissolved corporation uh, is liable to produce them for at least six years following the date of dissolution. As I indicated, these requirements are not the only requirements for record retention in the Business Corporations Act, and you should consult with a lawyer if you have any questions about whether you're maintaining the proper corporate records. I'm going to transfer it to Bethany and she's going to lead us through a few more pieces of legislation. Thanks. So the Employment Standards Code is another piece of legislation that has rules with respect to uh, document retention. Specifically, the code requires employers to maintain um, certain types of employment records. This includes things like the start date of employment, uh, paid earnings, vacation time taken, termination notices, things like that. So the code requires that these employment records be retained for at least three years from the date that each record is uh, maintained. The code also provides for a two year limitation period for penalties and offenses under the act. So again, we have that limitation date that comes into play uh, when you wanna consider how long you're keeping your records. In terms of uh, tax records, there's a number of statutes that apply. Um, a few examples include the Income Tax Act, the Excise Tax Act, and the Employment Insurance Act. Um, however, even though there's a bunch of different um, pieces of legislation, the rules are fairly similar between the various statutes. Um, a few overall and general rules that apply are that you are required to keep tax records at your place of business or at your residence in Canada unless the CR CRA gives you written permission to keep them elsewhere. You're also required to maintain your tax records for a period of at least six years from the end of the last tax year in which they relate. So that's a little bit longer of a period. Um, and if you're wanting to destroy any of those uh, tax records before the end of the retention period, you also have to get the CRA's written permission to do so. Um, as usual, as with the Business Corporations Act, there's um, multiple other specific rules that apply for certain types of uh, records and certain types of documents, and that's going to require further legal advice as it goes beyond the scope of what we're talking about today. 
So now that we have an understanding of some of the legislation that applies to record retention, uh, we'll provide a few tips for how to create your own records management policy. So uh, when creating a policy, you'll want to ensure that the policy identifies and categorizes the types of records that you have, that it complies with the specific rules um, for how certain types of records are to be collected and retained. You want to make sure that the policy sets out where and how those records are going to be stored and sets out a period of time in which they have to retain those records. And again, all of that needs to comply with the specific rules and the specific pieces of legislation. Um, and you also want to have a process for securely disposing of the records, sorry, when, um, when that time period is over. So you need to dispose of the records after that time period. The policy should provide some level of employee training um, for record retention. And finally, you'll also want to provide for an annual, annual audit or review of your records. So that's um, all for today's segment of Business Break. Thanks for tuning in again. Um, feel free to contact Tamara or myself if you have specific questions for records management or if you need assistance crafting your own records management policy that's tailored to your specific needs.